Christine, welcome to Book Talk. Today we're discussing Opposition by Jennifer L. Armentrout, the final book in the Lux series. The series has wrapped, and I have finished, and it was just as fun and entertaining, if not more fun and entertaining, than the rest of them. This month I've been working with Entangled Teens, so they sent me this beautiful hardcover copy. You all know how much I love hardcover, so that was rather exciting. So opposition! It's hard to go into this without spoiling you. I, I would just say if you haven't read it and you've started the Lux series, you should read this one too! Full of all the snark, all the random pop culture references, everything you'd want is here. That's all I can really say. I mean, if you haven't started the series yet and you want something fun and awesome and hilarious, I would say go pick up Obsidian. I have book talks for every single one of these books. They're a good time. For a good time, call Damon Black at 1-800-DAMON-BLACK. But that for the non-spoilery section because this is the final book. Bye-bye non-spoilery. Come back when you read the book and we can discuss it. Bye non-spoileries. Okay. So opposition. We start off with that whole zombie sequence thing where Dean Dawson and Dane were like sucked into the incoming Lux flux and Katie was standing there like what the f game and why are you what's, and it's been two days. Thing? I was scared in the beginning that it was going to be like one of those New Moon Syndrome. It just it felt like New Moon Syndrome. And then we found Damon and he was like... <sighs> and Katie was like, WTF? And then Dawson attacked her and then we got to the place and we were like, WTF Damon? We knew Damon was acting though. You could tell because we see from his point of view and he still likes Katie. And he just doesn't want to think about her because the Lux are like a beehive. There's like a queen bee that rules them all through their radio brains. And it was just uncomfortable. Dawson still had his own thoughts because he loved a human and Damon loved a human. But then we have D and this bitch. Like, I had enough of D in the last two and a half books. We finally get her back in origin. And then <sighs> this bitch telling Katie she's gonna chuck her down the step. Excuse me. She threw Katie through a wall. Oh, the. the a wall! Like there was a Katie sized hole in the wall! I used to love Dee! Now I have no patience. You don't care enough about your friends to to overpower the radio beehiveness? I couldn't believe when Katie woke up for the first time in the bed in that governor's mansion and Dee was like, hey bitch wad, thought you died. You better walk faster or else I'll just push you down the stairs and paralyze you. I mean, as it progressed, we finally got Dee back and we had to beat her up and nail her to the floor and be like, hey, remember Adam, 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 Adam. So we would just like wake up some senses in her and then she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. It curls up into a ball. I'm so sorry. You were gonna kill Damon. You said to Damon, I want to be like this. Stop. I finally don't feel pain. It's like she kind of did make a conscious decision. Damon thinks she doesn't have an evil bone in her body, but I think she does have an evil bone. We've seen it. She was evil after Adam died to Katie, and it's okay right after Adam died, but then Katie apologized and was really, really remorseful, and it wasn't even really Katie's fault, and he was still, bitch, we can't be friends. And then the first second D gets to turn evil, what does she do? Turns evil. I don't know about her. At the end, everything was hunky-dory and like she was back to her old self and she's with Archer and I like Dee and Archer together. Darcher. Artie. Artie. <laughs> Beth and Dawson's kid Ashley spelled her name out in blocks on the floor and she's like a few months old and Dee was like, I couldn't spell my name till I was in first grade and my name is three letters. <laughs> So we had that new moon syndrome scare in the very beginning, but as per usual, we can count on Jennifer Alarm and Trout to throw that out the window in five seconds. It doesn't take Damon long to break character. And then they reunite upstairs and they pretend to be fighting and really they're having the sexy time. If Katie and Damon aren't out saving the world, they're most likely having wild alien sex upstairs. This book was 90% kick-ass sexy times and Harry Potter references. Gotta love the Harry Potter references. Reference after reference after reference and I was like oh my god so many pop culture references I love it like, there's a walking dead reference there was an Avengers reference there were so many hilarious lines I know asking you to stay in the car is too much but please stay close to me Luke might trust this douche but I don't it's not like I'm gonna run up and hug him I sure hope not I might get jealous and then I just like you'd get jealous if she hugged a tree maybe I'm needy like that <laughs>
We met this officer whose daughter's fiance is a Luxon. I thought that was really interesting, and I really liked that general. Should we talk about Nancy? Nancy Husher. What a lovely lady. In the beginning, when we had that badass sequence where Katie is in the car, she's in that limo, and they're telling her that they know that they can read her mind. Oh my, the reveal that Sadie is an origin. And I was like, oh! <gasps> and she knew the whole time that Damon was lying, and he knew about Beth and Dawson. And Katie goes all superhero badass and flips the limousine and ruins their trip to wherever they were going. That scene was awesome. They're all surrounded after that. Daedalus shows up and this helicopter comes down. And I think this is Nancy about to come and assemble her Avengers. The Avengers of Earth. I get really excited because uh, she needs them now. She wants them on her team. I thought she was going to be nice and be like, let me feed you all the food there is, give you all this protection. We're BFFs now, but no. No, she just picks them up. Luke has her metaphorically at gunpoint. Luke has her precious origin babies. Uh, she can't be without her origin babies. I don't, I don't understand the train of thought there. Why wouldn't you treat these Luxon really nicely so when the Luxon come to invade Earth like you thought they were going to, you'd have some on your side to help fight for Earth? I haven't read the Aram novella, so I didn't know about Hunter, but that dude's pretty cool. I love how they came into play in the end here. I didn't love how we went down into the sewers where the mole people Aram live. Their leader's this sick, twisted jerk off. I'm not sure how feeding for an Aram works. Like, are they like vampires? Do they clamp onto your neck? Or do they turn to smoke and just stick their hand into you? I thought it was more like a like suck out your, like a Dementor's kiss sort of a thing. I didn't realize that they could feed like vampires and not take all the light. I was interested to see how it worked when we were going to feed off Katie. And then he's like, ha, 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 gotcha. I mean, it's kind of like a parody of a villain. And Jay Long does that a lot. She takes the concept that we see all the time and she kind of puts a oh. comedic twist on it. Visiting these Aram kind of remind me of visiting the Volturi. Or the way Arrow is. If he has to feed from you, he's feeding from you. But this one is like, ha ah, 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 ah. I just wanted to mess with you emotionally. Damon didn't want her to do it, obviously. Katie didn't either. It's this emotional torture that they had to go through before. It was really the price for the Aram army. I love the whole joke on how they go back to Hunter and his brothers. They're like, okay, we're gonna go get food. We'll be back in an hour. Please, just, we'll be back in an hour. They trust the Luxon in their house. They was like, I can't believe they left us here. Maybe we should switch the furniture around and stuff. <laughs> Meanwhile, five seconds later, psychotic bitch T shows up and the entire house is destroyed. <laughs> then we have our whole end climactic sequence. Katie sees that her mom's an alien. I gotta say, I knew her mom was gonna be an alien. I knew she wasn't just gonna be okay. I mean, they're body snatching the hell out of the town. When they first drive through, they're like, oh my God, Lux on her everywhere but not gonna be in Katie's kitchen. I don't know why they didn't think about that beforehand. Maybe Damon did, but he didn't even wanna share it with Katie at all. But Katie was so surprised. It really got to me when she was talking about in the epilogue how she still misses her mom all the time and she'll just get bored and she'll like wanna call her and just talk to her about life. And she's not there and she'll never be there. And that's something I think we all do, especially, you know, when you're not living with your mom. The the idea of that happening and not being able to call your mom, it, it, it just teared up. Um, but at the time, I didn't tear up because I was expecting her to be an alien. I was expecting her to be gone. There was no way the mom was just going to be chilling in the lounge chair like, Hey, Katie! And then Damon gets shot at the end. I was waiting for someone to die, but I didn't think anyone was actually going to die. I thought there was going to be a scare. Because last book, we had a lot of deaths. Damon got shot, but I knew j Larm wouldn't kill off Damon on us. It's, it's too horrible. We wouldn't end the Lux series like that. No one wants that. We had a nice, cute little epilogue. And then they had this really nice family going in Colorado. It was nicely wrapped up. I was very happy with the end. The only thing that didn't happen that I wanted to happen, I was like, excuse me, excuse me, D. Um, Katie was supposed to take Archer to the Olive Garden. I want to see that scene where Katie takes him to the Olive Garden for the first time and the breadsticks and the soup and salad. Whatever. And we have Ashley, this female origin. I can't imagine raising her. That's gotta be 
the scary. It's so risky. I mean, of course it's different than the kids that were, you know, torn from their parents and brainwashed propaganda raised to kill people. But still risky. It's scary thinking that like when Katie was holding and Ashley, Ashley was probably reading her mind knowing that she's uncomfortable. Oh, weird. It's uncomfortable. I don't want them being so intelligent at such a young age. <laughs> Overall, such a fun book. I think my favorite um, series is still Origin because it was just, ah, it was so good. I think mine goes Origin, Obsidian, Opposition, Opal, and Onyx. Let me know how you rank the series, your favorite parts of Opposition. I'm Christine. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Goodbye. Ooh.